So you bought yourself a YSL Stinger sprayer and you've probably already seen the disassembly video. Well, this is gonna be the reverse order of that, your reassembly video. So you can see exactly how to take all the parts you've taken apart and put it back together. I wanted to separate these out because sometimes you, you just wanna know one thing or the other, not have to fast forward through the whole video. So hopefully that's gonna be helpful for you guys to have one and the other separated out. So if you've taken your gun apart, have cleaned it or just to play to see what parts are what this video is going to help you put it back together so if this is something you're looking forward to stay tuned today on rgtv All right, so we're reassembling our gun this time. And again, this is our Stingray Wise Owl sprayer, and it was made by Apollo. So all Apollo parts, very high quality, absolutely amazing to use, and super easy to disassemble and reassemble. You'll be very surprised. So we're gonna reassemble from the front to back, going in reverse order. And as you can see, I got everything all laid out. So we're gonna insert the nozzle. And don't forget that little black gasket, which is the little fiber washer deal. And that just ensures that the nozzle screws on tight and keeps a really good seal, which obviously would be very important right here at the front of the gun. So we're gonna just use our hand, uh, tighten it up as best as we can by hand. And then we have our gun wrench that comes with your purchase that you're gonna to use to tighten it further. Now, you're gonna use the angled end of the gun wrench, but you're only gonna tighten it until it's snug. Do not over tighten. This is gonna be another one of those parts where it needs to be snug and on there good, but not where you're just bearing down on it to tighten it up. It just needs to be on there good and snug. Next up, we're going to go in reverse order with all the other little parts that go on the inside, starting with our distribution ring. Set that down in there, make sure it goes in correctly. And this is where it gets a little tricky on how everything needs to go, because it has to go in a very specific way. So we're going to insert the air distributor plate with the, the nipples facing upwards, so towards you. And then there's location pins at the top and at the bottom, right? And we want to ensure that those are at 6 and 12 o'clock if you're facing the gun up and down because there's going to be little indentations. And I'll try to get a close-up for you if I can right there where those little pins are going to fit into. And you want to make sure that those pins land inside of those little spots to ensure this thing turns and clicks and does all the things it needs to do correctly. So you're going to push that down along with the spring and then you're going to place the air cap onto the air distributor plate while you're pushing it down to ensure it stays in place. So push that down so you're holding it, continue to hold it down. That spring's going to want to pop it up so you got to hold it. And then you're going to use the, the air cap ring. You're going to thread that onto the air distributor housing. And you're just going to want to keep pressure down on the cap until you get this thing screwed all the way on. And sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain trying to hold one and screw one at the same time. As you can see, I always have a little trouble just getting the threads to hit just right. But you wanna make sure it hits just right. And once it does, it'll spin. And you can see I was able just to spin it. But you wanna make sure that's on there good and tight. And then as you can see, everything's turning correctly. You have your three different up, down, left, right, and then diagonal different ways that you're going to be able to spray and if you watch the testing video, you kind of know what I'm talking about with that. So there you go. You got all the front end done. And now we're going to start working with the middle to the back. And so we're going to insert that gland nut back into the spot just in front of the trigger. And you have the gun wrench to do this as well. But we're first going to screw it in just by hand, screwing it in slowly kind of tighten it as best you can by hand and this is another one where you're not going to want to over tighten and there's a couple little steps to it so we're going to walk through that just so you kind of know how that affects the gun and how it sprays and how the trigger pulls and all that kind of stuff so we're going to insert the needle first so we're going to stick that in through the back and again just be mindful that you're not bending or pulling or tugging you're gently slide the needle all the way through to the front 
And then we're going to insert the needle spring right over top of that. Too easy. And then we're going to insert the flow adjustment knob and we're just going to push that down on because the spring will have a little spring action to it. So push it down in till the threads catch and you're just going to screw that all the way down in. And we're going to do some adjustments here with the gland nut, the gun, and you see if it's screwed all the way down, the trigger does not move at all whatsoever. If you screw it out a little bit, the trigger will start to move. And that's kind of how you know, like how much, how much you're going to be spraying in and out. And again, if you watch the setup video, I kind of talk that through as far as how much you turn and all that kind of stuff to get the, the amount of product coming out as you need to. Next, we're going to adjust that gland nut with the gland seal there. And that's going to be where we're going to go ahead and tighten the gland nut until it doesn't move back and forth. Right? So we're going to want to make sure that that the gun, okay, it's not wanting to move, right? You can see it's barely moving at all. Okay. So once we have it that tight, then we're going to go ahead and loosen it. So we're going to loosen it about eighth of a turn or until the needle moves somewhat freely. So we don't want it super tight, but we want it tight enough. And you'll kind of get a feel for it where there's a smooth feel to the trigger. And that's what you're looking for, where it has a nice smooth feel. So you're stopping any product from coming through the gland nut, but you're not having it too tight where the trigger doesn't like move freely. And I guess that's the biggest thing. You want to make sure no product is popping through there but you can still use the gun as you need to next up we're going to insert the air feed connector back into the gun obviously this is going to be where the tube goes for your air and you have the different little barbs facing out screw part goes in and again no making fun of me or my big wrench that i have if you watched my disassemble video yeah that's all I had laying around. So it's what I have to use for this video as well. So, but we don't have a wrench that's provided for this. You just any adjustable wrench. I don't know the exact size of this cause I didn't have one. You're just gonna tighten it just so. Again, you don't wanna over tighten some of these things but this is one where you wanna make sure maybe it's a little bit tighter than say the gland nut was. And yeah, this was kind of a pain. I really wish I would have had a smaller adjustable wrench for this part but we're going to get that on there and then we're going to get that air tube started as soon as we get the assembly in place here all right so we're going to insert or install the cup assembly right so ultimately we're going to take that screw you see there and we're going to attach it back to the gun so we have our cup assembly and we're just you know using your fingers just thread that nut back on and that's all there's going to be to this and then this I, I actually had a wrench so I grabbed that one and tighten it up but before we tighten it up what we're looking to do is make sure that air feed connector is at seven o'clock and you can kind of see where the air feed connector on the gun and the air feed connector on the cup assembly are on the same exact side. You see what I'm doing there? So before you tighten it up fully, you wanna make sure those are aligned on the same side. And it makes obviously makes sense because the two, you're not gonna not wanna have it crossing over from one side to the other. So like I said, you're gonna align the air feed connector on the cup assembly to right about that seven o'clock if you're looking down over top of it. And then get my three fourths wrench to tighten that nut and make sure it doesn't move, doesn't go anywhere, and it's good and tight. And you can see I put it down a little bit to give a little force to it just to make sure it's good and tight on there. My air feed connector is at 7 o'clock. Trigger's working good. Ready to go to go ahead and push the air feed tube onto the air feed connector on the gun. And this is a, an important part. So the white side up and, and the black side down. So this is important for the air to flow as it's supposed to. So make sure the white side up is going into the gun and the black side is going down into the cup assembly. 
just like so. And again, when you're putting these on, you don't have to put it all the way on, all four barbs, the little bumps on the air feed connector. It only needs to go down a couple. Um, if you put it on all the way, sometimes it can be tough to get off and you might have to cut it to get off. So just, just something to be aware of. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to go all the way down on. If you can get it all the way down on and pop it off by hand, great. Next up, we're gonna insert the top cup gasket. And in my disassembly video, I did not take this out, but it's fairly easy. Just pull that little cup gasket out and clean in and around it when you're gonna clean it. I'll have that in the cleaning video, but just something to help the seal ultimately between the cup assembly and the cup itself. So we're gonna stick the cup on there, twist it around, make sure the little gold brass uh, parts are sticking out are hitting into the cup assembly and then we're going to latch it into place and you can see the tube is off to that left hand side matching up with the gun and voila our gun is completely put back together really easy step by step hopefully this was helpful for everyone and there you have it the reassembly of your wise owl stingray sprayer gun hopefully this video was helpful just walk you through those steps, seeing how the pieces go back together and allowing you to know for sure that you're gonna have the best spray experience possible. And what's gonna really accomplish that is the cleaning and that'll be my next video. So if you enjoyed this one, looking forward to the next one, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and comment to tell me what other kind of spraying information you'd like to see. Hope everybody has a blessed day and as always, happy painting.